I wish I get a chance to be able to be with you. And quite frankly, I wish we could get a chance just to be able to sit down together almost anywhere right now. But I appreciate the engagement and uh, what's happening with the Oklahoma Conservation Commission, all the educational work and the things that you continue to do. They asked me if I could give a quick update of some of the things that are happening in Washington, D.C. right now. Well, there's a lot that's going on. The main thing in the Senate that's happening right now is nominations going through. Obviously, President Biden's filling in his cabinet. We're working through that process. Last week, for instance, we had Secretary of Agriculture Vilsack is making his return trip uh, back to be able to lead uh, the uh, agriculture and USDA. Uh, so that confirmation was done last week. We've got several that are pretty high profile right now. Secretary of Interior uh, Deb Halen uh, is in process right now. We also have Javier Becerra with HHS. Both those are fairly controversial nominations and actually working through the process of those uh, right now as well. So obviously a lot of conversation on COVID. Uh, there's a COVID package that uh, my Democratic colleagues are trying to be able to work through. It's $1.9 trillion. Actually, it's really closer to $2 trillion. Uh, we've been trying to focus in on this whole proposal on getting the targeted relief that people need. My focus all along has been there's a lot of expense with COVID. We're very exposed economically. Uh, we need to do what we need to do, but not more than we need to do. So we've done things like the Paycheck Protection Program, money for education, uh, money for individual assistance, individual businesses, uh, trying to be able to work through the process as much as we can to keep everybody going, whether that be vaccines, and uh, testing equipment or whether that be ways to be able to restart our economy. We've done four trillion of that and quite frankly, billions and billions of that's not even out the door. Uh, last December, we did almost a trillion dollar uh, proposal and package uh, for COVID relief. Most of that money has not even been spent yet. So it's been frustrating because they've crammed in a lot of things into the package like a, a new bridge in New York uh, for Senator Schumer, a tunnel in San Francisco, uh, for Speaker Pelosi. There's all kinds of different giveaways uh, that are built into this $2 trillion package that are not COVID related. We're trying to push back and to say, let's do the things that need to be done for COVID, but let's not do the things that don't need to be done. So we're still negotiating that, trying to be able to press that and say, Let, let's be targeted in this approach. And we're also trying to work on things like CDC letters. Um, I, I have a letter I just put to CDC and then phone calls to them uh, there are lots of folks that have received their vaccine now, especially a lot of seniors in Oklahoma that have already received their vaccine. They want to go see their grandkids now. Uh, there are assisted living facilities that everybody in the facility, uh, staff and residents have all received their vaccine, but they're being told still to stay in place. Well, that's really, really frustrating for them. For a year, uh, they've said things will get different once, they, once you get a vaccine. Now they've had a vaccine but things aren't getting different. So I'm trying to push the CDC to say, you've got to actually put out guidance on this issue to be able to help people in the process so they get a sense of hope because right now a lot of people are losing hope that this is ever going to get better, especially with the administration talking seriously about we're gonna wear masks till 2022. There's no guidance for people that have vaccines. Uh, it's a pretty frustrating process. So we're trying to just nudge on the administration with letters, with phone calls, with the press to them to say, get the next level of guidance. You put guidance out for schools to say that schools can safely reopen and here's how to do it. You need to get guidance out there for those that have had the vaccine as we continue to accelerate the number of people that have received the vaccines. A lot of other issues uh, that are working through the process in the early stages of this, whether it be energy, I've just joined the Energy and Natural Resources Committee. Uh, there's a lot of energy issues coming out of that very cold snap that we had now two weeks ago. And it, isn't it nice to actually feel sunshine and not see 10 inches of snow on the ground in Oklahoma uh, anymore? But we're trying to work through what happened. How do we keep that from happening again? How do we keep us more resilient in our power systems? Uh, so a lot of issues we're working through and trying to be able to take those things kind of a step at a time uh, through the process. If you want to stay in contact with us, you can always do that langford.senate.gov. Uh, that's our website, langford.senate.gov. You can email us, call us, stay in contact. We're glad to be able to help as we've had lots of folks that have called our office and asking about uh, individual checks that are coming out or social security or tax questions and challenges they've had based on all the things that have happened with the COVID time. So if your family has had veteran issues, social security, whatever it may be, if it has a federal connection, don't hesitate to call us. It's why we have a team in Oklahoma to be able to help resolve some of those issues. So look forward to the days we can get a chance to visit face-to-face. -face. God bless y'all.